Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, to the Magic Time Wine Channel. I'm Thomas, your host, here to talk to you today about Bordeaux. I filmed the longer version of this video and it was boring as hell, so <laughs> I deleted it and I'm here, I'm back doing it again. Um, I just want to give you some quick tips about how to get inexpensive Bordeaux. Uh, number one, you've got to realize that Bordeaux creates an ocean of wine. I live here in Napa Valley, and Napa Valley has about 18,000 hectares under vine. About 18,000 hectares planted to grapevines. And we produce a very uh, small amount of wine in terms of the overall quantity produced in California. But to give you some perspective, Bordeaux is 120,000 acres, um, or not acres, hectares. And they produce much more wine, an ocean of wine. And the quality um, disparity in Bordeaux is large. You can have the best of the best first gross for thousand plus dollars per bottle, all the way down to the fifth gross, and then underneath that, an ocean of just Bordeaux or Bordeaux Superior, which can range in quality tremendously. So the first thing that you want to consider when trying to find Bordeaux for you know twenty, thirty dollars, or even less is vintage. Their vintages uh, matter there. Here in Napa, you know, we have like eight to 10, or eight out of 10 really good vintages. I mean, our weather is awesome here in California. Barring some natural disaster or some crazy fires, which we've kind of had some of that lately, you're probably gonna have really good wine here in Napa. And, you know, picking up a bottle of Napa Valley Cab at the grocery store, if it says Napa Valley on the label, it's probably gonna be pretty damn good. I mean, kind of in the lower levels, you know, the 20, $20 level like that, you might have uh, trouble with finding good Napa Valley wine. But you know, once you get over 50 bucks here in Napa, you're almost guaranteed to have a darn good bottle of wine. Bordeaux is, is a lot more a uh, lot more complicated. They don't have as many good vintages. It's very, very important to look at the vintage, uh, the date on the bottle. Now, I'll give you an example of this. Wine Spectator has vintage charts you can look at, so you can study those and figure out which vintages are good. Um, the 16 vintage, which this little Bordeaux is from the 16 vintage, got like a 96 point score for the overall vintage. Three years prior in 2013, Bordeaux got a 84 point uh, on, the, on the scale to 1 to 100. So it, it's, it, that's a drastic gap in quality. And this same exact wine that might be um, like serviceable in 16, which I tasted it already, and it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty good. Nothing extravagant, nothing awesome. But in 13, it's probably insipid. It probably, it's probably crap. Because the weather might have sucked that year. They might have had frost. They might have had rain, over abundance of rain. They might have had to pick earlier, and their wines were full of herbaceous flavors. Um, so there's, there's much more of a, a range in quality and vintage. Look at the charts before you go searching for inexpensive Bordeaux. Find the best vintages. I know that 2010 was awesome in Bordeaux. I think the spectator gave it 99. This is 96. But um, look at the vintage. Number two, um, Bordeaux is not just Bordeaux. There's sub-districts much like Napa Valley. Now you have the generic Napa Valley on the label and you can know that the grapes are from somewhere in Napa Valley but you also can get delineated into the districts. And those are usually markers that'll show you that the wine is better quality, such as Stag's Leap District, Oakville, Rutherford. Those are some of our really good districts here in Napa Valley, any of the mountain districts, Howe Mountain, Mount Veter, and all that. If it says that on the label and it's more delineated down there, and if it even goes down to the specific vineyard, you can be sure that the wine's probably gonna be a better quality. Same in Napa, or in Bordeaux. This is Bordeaux and it just says Bordeaux on the label. That was a little sketchy for me to buy this. If it would have said Bordeaux Medoc, which indicates it's from the left bank of the Jerome estuary, which means it's Cabernet driven. If it would have said Omedoc, which is even, which is inside the Medoc, Omedoc, that's a more delineated sub-district of Bordeaux that a lot of good regions are. Or inside of the Omedoc, if, if it would have said Pouillac on the label, or saint Julien, or Margot, um, or Pesac Leonion, these are little sub-districts. And if it says that, um, you can be sure that the wine is maybe of a little bit higher quality. Now, trying to find them in the $20 price point with those distinctions on them are difficult, but you can find them. Um, if it's on the other side of the Jerome estuary in Bordeaux, um, you're gonna wanna look for Pomerol or saint Emilion, and to a lesser extent, some little, uh, the, satellites like Lalande de Pomerol and all of the little sub-districts of Saint-Emilion and Pomerol. 
Now it might be a little difficult in, to, in Bordeaux to find a Pomerol that's affordable. Most of them are over $60, which are 100% are Merlot. But those are some indicators. So if it says Bo just Bordeaux, you gotta be a little bit more careful and maybe try out a lot of them. So that's my third thing is that if you wanna find good expensive Bordeaux, find the good vintage. And then if it just says Bordeaux on the label and there's no, none of those little sub-districts, well then you gotta try a few. Buy a few, they're cheap, $10, $15. Buy like 10 of them and then find which ones are really good and then there, there's your go-to um, inexpensive Bordeaux. Now what you can expect from an inexpensive Bordeaux that just says Bordeaux on the label in a quality vintage is serviceable wine. It's not gonna blow you away. It's not gonna to floor you with its you know, silkiness and quality, but what you're gonna get is varietal integrity. This Bordeaux right here, I do not know the varietal breakdown. They don't say it on the back of the label. I'm guessing it's a combination of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. Maybe a little heavier on the Merlot side from the smell of things. Also, you can Google these chateaus and they will tell you the varietal breakdown. If it don't, doesn't say it on the back of the label, you can see how their vineyard is planted and what's probably in your glass. So we have the internet. That's my fourth tip is get online, Google these producers when you pick them up on the shelf real quick. We have cell phones where we can do that live in the wine shop or in the grocery store. Look it up. There should be a consensus, whether it's on Seller Tracker or whether one of these publications like Wine Spectator, Robert Parker, Wine Enthusiast had marked it with a, a uh, score. You can find it out that way too. This one I grabbed um, and took a gamble on it. It said 89 points, Wine Enthusiast, which is kind of a little tell that it might be of quality for the price. I think I paid $15 for it. It's called Chateau Grand Marchand. Chateau Grand Marchand. Anyways, that is the video. That's my tips on finding good expensive Bordeaux. If you have any questions or you have any inexpensive Bordeaux that you love, write it in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching.